Hi guys, uh, I recently did a seminar in Slovenia and one of the questions that uh, kept popping up after I made a statement during the event was, you know, was I sure about what I was saying about packing the shoulders? Um, basically, there's, I think, a lot of confusion about this approach to weight training and how we should actually position ourselves for safe upper body movements. And, and I think it has, uh, at the end of the day, come down to maybe a fundamental lack of knowledge surrounding uh, upper body functional anatomy, or maybe us just being a little bit too short with how we describe this. So I think the best way to attack this is to speak to it from a, uh, an anatomical and then a functional perspective so we can actually um, look at the rationale for a correct packing strategy to make sure that our shoulders stay safe with, with overhead motions. So if you really look at um, you know packing with the lat, which is what we're often to uh, told to do do with our exercises. Um, you know, you hear this with a lot of kettlebell exercises. You hear about um, people doing their overhead pressing, trying to activate lats to stabilize the shoulder. Um, you know, we hear about powerlifters trying to activate the lats to, you know, really create a good platform from which to bench. You know, I think we need to actually look at the the lat in a little bit uh, of a closer anatomical perspective to to really appreciate why this may not be a good idea. Um, if you really look at the points of attachment of your lat, um, it inserts down the the thoracolumbar fascia, um, really from between four and eight vertebrae, depending on the per person, but what I'd also think you should really appreciate is that, you know, actually in some people will come down and even attach on the ilium, so the top of the pelvis. So um, what this makes us realize is that, you know, really your lat is the, the big muscle that we rely on very heavily to help to transfer force from the lower body to the upper body. Um, because as it comes up from that, that lower attachment point, um, you know, on the way by, it'll actually grab the ribs with some costal attachments. In about 40% of the population, it actually does have uh, an attachment point on the scapula if you look at the cadaveric studies. And then, like we know, it, it comes right up and it attaches um, you know, on the intertubicular groove of the, of the humerus. So that's what allows us to train it with exercises like pull-ups and pull-overs and pull-downs and, and rowing variations and things like that. So I think what you can also appreciate about this is that everyone's lat anatomy is probably going to be a little bit different. Beyond just the scapular positioning thing, you can see how some people may have a longer muscle belly and a shorter tendon um, you know, where they may be pre more predisposed to a VTOR. So it's not really maybe significant in the context of the discussion we're having right now but it is kind of an interesting thing to look at from a functional anatomy perspective so I think what we need to appreciate about your lat is that its anatomy really drives a, a wide variety of functions when you when you cross that many joints and have such a broad um, cross-sectional area and extensive you know series of, of uh, influences on, on different you know uh, you know bony or slash osseous systems um, you know we can we can actually achieve a lot of different actions so I think we know humeral extension is one right you know as your elbow would go past your body um, you know as you might see with like the the bottom of a chin up or a row really anything from a flex position so when we do a pull up we're actually extending our humerus um, likewise adduction would be you know pulling the the upper arm towards the midline of the body um, we know that because your lat comes and kind of wraps around on the front side of the humerus that's what allows it to internally rotate your humerus um, as you go through these various motions it's also a very weak horizontal abductor, um, so probably not really clinically significant in the context of this discussion. But you know what we've always been taught are these are the actions of it, and that's all well and good. But that really only speaks to what's actually going on up here. It doesn't speak to the fact that because we have these attachments way down here, our, our lats will actually pull us into more of an arched back position. So it'll it'll drive you know lordosis slash lumbar extension, um, and also when contracting unilaterally, it can make you actually kind of side bend and go into lateral flexion. Um, I'd also add that you know your, your lat can be kind of a supplemental respiratory muscle. It can be something that helps you to get air in if you have a faulty core positioning and you know you don't effectively use your diaphragm. So there really are a, a wide variety of motions that are taking place with your lat. But what I want you to think about is, is what actually has to happen when you want to take your arm up overhead to be stable. Um, if you're going to overhead press or you can do a, a kettlebell bottoms up carry or something on those lines, your humerus needs to flex, it needs to, to raise up, it needs to abduct, you know, which is another way to get your arm up overhead. Um, and really you need to externally rotate a little bit to create a little bit more of a, a safe position. Um, this is why people who have you know, shoulder impingement tend to have more problems with their, their internally rotated. It, it closes down the space 
um, underneath their chromium process, the shoulder, so that the cuff tendons are more easily impinged. So to get overhead, you need flexion, you need abduction, you need external rotation if we're just talking about the, the ex actions of the humerus. If you think about what the lats do, they directly oppose all three of those actions. So your lats are really um, you know, fighting against you in every you know, manner you could possibly perceive with respect to the humerus. Um, take it a step further, we also actually need to have good upward rotation of our scapula. We need to be able to get um, you know, basically that scapula to rotate up to maintain a good ball and socket congruency as our arm goes up overhead. Um, I just had a YouTube video a couple weeks ago talking about scapular upward rotation so you guys can, can go check that out on this, this same YouTube page. But um, you know, what I think you also have to think about is because the, the lats have this you know, kind of top to bottom attachment points and some people it actually does grab the scapula, they tend to pull people down into scapular depression and even downward rotation. So effectively what your lats are doing is if you know if you're looking at upward rotation of the scapula as a race, when your lats are really, really on, whether it's because you have a lot of resting tone or because you're actively cueing them to fire, it's like you know pulling yourself back 10 yards behind the starting line. So when that gun goes off and you need to get your arm up overhead or start running the race, um, really your lats are, are working against you. So you know what do these people usually look like? Well, this is a pretty you know kind of common presentation I'll show you in the next slide, but you know you have to look at is your is your lat a core stabilizer or is it a destabilizer? I'd argue that a lot of the low back pain we see in athletes is because you know one of the many things they have going on is they have a, a very dominant lat um, stabilization strategy. Um, you know it transfers force, but you know that doesn't necessarily mean we always want to have it on. Um, if you look at the the YouTube page I'm, I'm referring to here below, look at some of the exercises I post some of the deep squat breathing with lat stretch, the back to wall shoulder flexion, the bench T-spine mobs, the wall side variations. These are exercises we use on a daily basis with our athletes as part of their warm-ups and their training programs. And we do so with great results. And, and what you realize about all these is it's all about getting humeral flexion, uh, humeral external rotation, humeral abduction, and driving scapular upward rotation. We're doing the exact opposite of packing um, you know, the shoulder down with the lats. Um, so go watch those videos and you get an appreciation for it. What you'll also notice about all those exercises is we're not just worrying about the scapula and the humerus. We're also worrying about repositioning um, the lumbar spine, getting people out of so much extension and instead getting them back to neutral or even taking them to a, a slightly flexed position. Um, everything that you know we often look overlook with respect to the lats is they they come in right in that posterior aspect of the shoulder before wrapping around the front. Um, that's an area where we have a lot of stuff coming together. We have you know our, our posterior deltoid, our rotator cuff tendons, we've got um, you know, long headed triceps, we have Terry's major. We have a lot of gunk that kind of comes together and creates friction. So you'll see a lot of people, um, you know, with all those tendinous insertions in a small area, get really gross in the back of the shoulder. So we don't want to feed into it. But, you know, what do we wind up seeing? We wind up seeing, you know, stuff like this. We see a guy who has, you know, a, quite a bit of, of muscularity. He's very well trained, obviously, but he actually looks like his upper traps are non-existent. And that's really because his, it's an alignment issue. He has a, a pretty significant top to bottom imbalance where he's very, uh, you know, kind of stuck in scapular depression and his upper traps are actually lengthened. Um, you know, if we were to just raise up his scaps a little bit and put, you know, the, the superior medial border of the scap in line with, with his second thoracic vertebrae, I think you'd notice that he actually has more muscle mass than you really appreciate. And obviously he's a little bit more abducted. He's pretty far away from the spine and he's a little bit anteriorly tilted as well. But um, really, I, this is a good example of we need to make sure we pay attention to top to bottom balance of the shoulder, not not just front to back. So with him, he's very, very gritty, nasty, and fibrotic on the bottom side, and that's what's limiting his ability to upwardly rotate when he takes his arm overhead. So are you going to tell this guy, I want you to pack your shoulder down even further with the lats? I think the answer is no, and, and if you are going to do some kind of packing strategy, it should be something that realigns that scapula into a good neutral position, and in his case, takes care of of the anterior tilt. So, you know, what's going to do that? Well, I think lower, lower trapezius to the rescue. Um, you know, if we look at this same picture from before, but a different highlighted area, obviously our trapezius has an upper, a middle, and a lower, um, you know, kind of branch. And, and they all work together, but at the same time, um, you know, we can prioritize certain things more than others. And, you know, I think what we realize is about 
lower trapezius is that the function, at, function of it is obviously to posteriorly tilt and retract the scapula. And, and the key word really there is, is the scapula. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a scenario where it doesn't have direct control of the humerus necessarily. It comes up and it attaches on the, on the scapula itself. So it can posteriorly tilt the scapula on the rib cage without aggressively pulling somebody into extension or cranking them down into scapular compression. Um, so there's a good system of checks and balances here. What we see, we see people who think they're they're using lats to do their their good you know uh, packing strategy, but in reality they're using lower traps. Or we have people that you know really are just overusing lats and getting into trouble. So you need your lower traps, you need your serratus anterior kind of around to the side here, and your upper traps to work together to basically take that scapula and rotate it up. So in reality, a good packing strategy is a subtle movement, and it comes via using this lower trapezius um, as opposed to using this lat. So you know what does this actually look like? Well, I had Andrew demonstrate it. What I want you to watch is when we play this. Notice the aggressive downward pull um, of the shoulder blade by the lat. You'll also notice that the ball kind of stays up as the socket drives down, which is how we impinge on our cuff, our biceps tendon, and potentially even our, our superior labrum. The other thing you'll notice is there's actually a little bit of kind of a coarse side bending. As we talked about, your, your lat can play into lateral flexion. So in addition to throwing off the scapular positioning, it can also throw off the core positioning. So let's watch it. See how it comes down aggressively? I don't see that as a good strategy. When, in fact, when he yanked down with his lats, he pulled his shoulder blade down into depression, probably some downward rotation. He went into a little bit of a side bend that you can kind of see because of the, the angle of his neck. But also notice how he actually dove out to the side a little bit. Instead of staying abducted and truly flexed, he actually extended and adducted a little bit. So his lat pulled him out here when in reality we want full shoulder flexion. So if we realign him back up to the top, get him back to neutral, you'll notice that good packing, that's it right there. It's a subtle, subtle movement. In fact, it's so subtle you probably missed it, so I'm going to play it again. All I want you to watch is this little trivial posteriorly tilting of his scapula. That's it. Okay, so when we do that little bit of posteriorly tilting, what we're effectively doing is we're clearing a little bit of space for the cuff tendons, the biceps tendon in the front to, to really breathe. Um, and we're maintaining that good ball and socket congruency um, between the scapula and between the humeral head. So just keep in mind that your lat from a functional anatomy standpoint really can't make a packing strategy work. Um, you know, so in the end, I think it's just wordplay. People really say lats and they probably just mean, you know, their upper back musculature. Um, the problem is most athletes are so lat dominant that we really should work a lot harder to make this, you know, this important differentiation. We should make them realize that when they are creating a good stable platform from which to press or to carry, it's probably not coming, uh, you know, from the lats in that position. It's probably a matter of having good scapular control on a stable core and a rib cage that's in a neutral alignment as opposed to just being cranked down into extension. So hopefully this made some sense. Um, you know, if you guys are looking for more feedback on, on this front and more information, I'd encourage you to check out our new product. It's called Functional Stability Training of the Upper Body. Um, it was a product I did with, with physical therapist Mike Reinhold, and um, it's part of a, our Functional Stability Training series and has, has been pretty popular. So I um, hope you'll check it out. It's on sale this week. And if you have any questions, feel free to post in the comment section below.